An early season poor run of form sees us in mid-table, severely below expectations. But a win today versus Bradford PA could get us back into the playoffs. Can we get it in today's episode of Walks to the Prem? Hello guys, it's me, Bad Jokes, back at you once again with another video. And today guys, we've got episode number 25 of the Kinslin Walks to Prem save here on Football Manager 2020. And guys, just before we do get into the video, if you are enjoying the series so far, please pop a thumbs up down below. Every like really does help the channel out. And if you're new around here, please do subscribe. Every new subscriber is very much loved around here. So, yep, so please do pop a like or subscribe if you're new. And yep, guys, into the video. We have got Bradford Park Avenue today. And it's very much a mid-table game. We was expected and told by the board that we've got to win the league this year. But it's not going to happen. We are a long, long way short of the top of the table. First up, I'll show you the schedule. We've played quite a few games since you was last with me. So I'll catch you up on all of them and then I'll show you the league table. And then we'll get into the game versus Bradford. And so schedule looks like this. You was last with me for the game against Gateshead. 2-0 defeat. Go back and watch it. We wasn't that good. Gateshead probably just about deserved to win that game, I think. And then after that, we had a 5-0 win against Tamworth, including four goals for the main man, Adam Marriott, and George Brown with the other one. And then following on from that, we was away again, and we drew 1-1 with FC United. Romain Mundell, our best player on the day, and he got us the goal that did give us the lead. But once they equalised, the game just petered out into a boring 1-1 draw. And then after that, we had a 3-2 win against Barrow. We went 2-0 up. They got one back just after half-time. Then we made it 3-1 from the penalty spot. And they did get one back to make things a little bit nervy. But we did manage to hold on for the win, which was a very nice performance there. But then we had our second defeat of the season already. Within the first month, we had as many defeats as we had going into the last episode of last season. This one was against Altrinham. They went 2-0 up. We got one back, but again, never looked like equalising, to be quite honest. And then we had a 1-0 win against Aston United. A very lucky win. We did not deserve to win this at all. But as you can see, we got a penalty from the penalty spot. Obviously, that's where most penalties are taken from. Don't know why I'm saying that. But yeah, we got a penalty. And Diaz Wright converted it, thankfully, in the very last minute. So a very, very nice result that was, considering we did not play that well. But you can see here, after the defeat against Altrincham, I lost a bit of confidence. And I started going with different formations. And I just didn't really feel comfortable with whatever we was going with. So that explains why we've had a little bit of a dip in form. Which includes this game here. 1-1 draw against Barwell. I think Barwell have only just come up into the league. So we should have beaten them. Adam Marriott got us an early goal. And I thought, wicked, we're on for a 3-4-5 here. But they got an equaliser in the 16th minute from our keeper scoring an own goal. Which was very, very disappointing. And then after that, we couldn't break them down. So we had to settle for 1-1 one, one there. And then we went for a 4-3-3 against Blythe. And that again finished 1-0. They took the lead this time. And Xavier Simmons equalised with what is quickly becoming his trademark long-range effort. And that got us the equaliser. But again, couldn't break him down. Unfortunately, Blythe is still one of those teams who always causes problems. And then Curzon Aston made it. Three draws on the spin. This time a very boring 
nil-nil there. And our third different formation in as many games there. So that was disappointing. And then I thought I'd go back to the... Well, I went back to the 4-4-1-1 for the game against Curzon. And then it finally started working a little bit against Kidderminster. We did get two goals right at the end. This looked like it was going to peter out into a nil-nil draw. But then they, they scored in the 76th minute. Adam Marriott equalised two minutes later and got us the winner with five or six minutes left on the clock. So that was another good result considering we was not playing that well. And then we played Gloucester and they gave us our third defeat of the season already. And it was another very disappointing performance. We only got a goal in the 94th minute and it was much, much too late after Joe Hanks and Christian Sadie had pretty much wrapped the game up for them at that point. And then we started off in the FA Cup and we had a very comfortable 2-0 win against Oxford City. Never any real danger in this game. As soon as Jaden Campbell opened the scoring, we was always going to win. Oxford never looked like troubling us. But then we went back to league action and another defeat made it two defeats in the league in a row. Sam Wardrop, our new right back, who I think I said in the last episode I wasn't too sure on because he made a couple of mistakes in pre-season and he's made another one there, gifting Hales Owen the win there with the own goal. And yeah, I was really fretting at this point. I think at this point we was like 15th or 16th in the league and really, really struggling. But since then, we have gone seven games unbeaten. I don't know what started working again. We've gone back to the formation from last season. So I think that's maybe started kicking in again. And we got two 2-1 wins in a row against South Shields and Spennymoor. Adam Marriott and Mundell with the goals there to give us the win against South Shields. And against Spennymoor, Adam Marriott with two goals. And then against Worcester in the FA Cup. We had a 4-1 win, Simmons with two, Marriott with one, Whitaker off the bench with another one. So that was a very beautiful performance. And after that, we went two games drawing again against Geisley, Xavier Simmons with another Lampard-esque goal. And then 0-0 draw against Alfreton. Very disappointing performance there. And then... Against Telford, away from home, we got back to winning ways. Adam Marriott with another hat-trick. The man is just a scoring machine. And then a 4-0 win against Gainsborough, again in the FA Cup. So we have at least achieved one of the board's club vision targets to get into the first round of the FA Cup, where we are going to be playing Solihull Moors. That will probably be the next episode. I should probably think. So we can try and see if we can finally get into the second round of the FA Cup. But yeah, that is you all caught up with the scores. And let's just have a look at Adam Marriott's scoring record for this season. Because once again, he is being absolutely phenomenal. 17 goals from 18 starts and one sub-appearance. The man is an absolute machine. Why our coaches only rate him at two star? I have no idea. If you can explain it down below, please do let me know. Because the man is just phenomenal. And now, with all that waffling out of the way, let's have a look at the league table and then get into the game. So, before we start, you can see that we've got two games in hand on the rest of the league. Because we have a, we've had a couple of games called off for waterlogged pitches, which is rather unfortunate. But that means that if we won both of those games, we would be fifth in the table. So not as bad, but still not brilliant. But we do have to make sure we win both of those games. And to be honest, we're already in a position where we can't afford to be dropping too many points for the rest of the season. And so, yep guys, into the game. I think so. So let's go and check out the team for the game versus Bradford Park Avenue. 
This is the team for today's game. We've got Herbin in goal, Wilson at left back, Hopkins and Jones are our central defenders for today. Wardrop is still at right back despite a couple of mistakes he has made. He needs to improve today. And then in the midfield, we've got Mbala, Wright, Simmons and Brown. Pretty much ever present, them four in the midfield. As well as our front two, Romain Mundell, just behind Adam Marriott, the goal-scoring machine. The bookmakers have us as heavy favourites for the game versus Bradford PA. And look at their kit. I'm sorry if you're a Bradford PA fan, but that kit's awful. That looks like something my nan would knit me. I really am sorry, but my gosh, you need to get a new kit. And yet, one to three favourites. We need to beat them just, just because of that kit. That's a crime against fashion, people. Here we are in the dressing room. Let's see if we can get some motivation into the boys. Uh, come on, lads. Show me what you can do to keep our run going. Because we are seven unbeaten. So, would be nice to make it eight and to maybe drag ourselves back into the playoff picture. And mm, not the most, not the most amount of reaction there, but oh well, prediction time. You know what? I'm feeling confident. Seven unbeaten. I'm going three nil, three nil to the Kingsley boys. Come on, you Linux! First highlight of the game, and it's Embala with a free kick right on the edge of the box, and well, poor, absolutely terrible effort there from Embala. Seven minutes in and it's us again with the ball and again it's going to Mbala. He's got a lot of space here. He plays it to Wilson who again is in space, crosses it in. Mundell with the header and that's just gone wide. But first two highlights for us, we're looking good so far. 18 minutes in, Bradford PA with a throw in. Asgard with the ball, goes to Senior, to Benyon. And can we please close him down, that would be very nice. Apparently not, so Clark plays the ball long, Wardrop collects it, and now can he play it back to the keeper? Yes, he does. Herbin with the ball, taking his sweet time here. Goes to Hopkins. He goes over the top, and oh, Marriott thought he was going to get in. He might do it off Mundell's pass. Marriott is in, and Marriott with the goal. A very, very fluky goal there. The keeper, Green, having a Rob Green from 2010 moment there. And we are very lucky to take the lead with Adam Marriott's 18th of the season. It was Mundell with the pass that put Marriott in. And it should have been a better effort, but yeah. Yeah, that Green ain't going to be happy with what happened there, is he, people? 20 minutes in, this game is full of highlights. Herbin again with the ball. Back in our own half, Jones goes over the top, and can Marriott get to this? I think he might. Has he got anyone in the box? Mundo, I think, is the only one there. Marriott plays it to Mbala. Can he cross it in? He does eventually. Goes to George Brown with a volley, and it's 2 0. And that's another goalkeeping howler that we have profited from there. George Brown with only his second goal, and both of his goals have come on camera. Maybe he's becoming a bit of a YouTube star. Maybe he's becoming someone who only wants to score when the cameras are on. But what a volley it was. But Green really should have caught that, I think you would say. 25 minutes in now. Wardrop with the free kick, crosses it in. Their man clears it away. But only as far as Wilson to Mbala. Can he get this ball into the box? Or can he just play it to Wilson? He goes to Wilson. And Wilson beats his man there, crosses it in, Marriott with the header, and Green finally remembers how to be a goalkeeper. The highlight continuing, Green goes long, but we head it away, Senior, Wardrop over the top, Marriott's in, Marriott is in, can he make it free? No he can't. Green seems to have woken up, unfortunately for us. One more highlight before the half-time whistle, Wardrop throws the ball forward to Mundell, to Brown. And Brown crosses the ball in and it gets headed away but only goes as far as our man Mundell and his shot should have gone in. Oh, we're looking like we're going to get a few today, boys. And that is half time. We have bossed this game. 10 shots, 2 their 6, 4 on target, 2 their 3, 
57% of the possession as well, which is gorgeous to see. After the struggles we had at the end of last season, keeping possession, we do seem to be back to last season's awesomeness right now. Let's go passionate. I'm very pleased. And let's start the second half. Come on, you Linux. One more to get my prediction right. Seven minutes into the second half, Senior with the ball for Bradford. Crosses it into the box, goes to Doherty, wide to Fountain. And now can we win this ball back here, please? That would be quite nice. Or just stand there and let him do whatever he wants. And Doherty's in. Doherty is in and it's a good save there from our man, Wilson. No, that's not our keeper's name, is it? I can't remember what our keeper's name is. Herbin. Just seen it there on the right-hand side. No idea who Wilson is. And then, oh, oh, right heads it away. Wilson's our, our right back. Why am I forgetting all our people's names? Griffiths with the shot and the goal. That's more important. 2-1. Bradford are back in this. Please don't let us throw this away. And, of course, that was Griffiths' first ever goal for Bradford. Because always, whenever someone scores against you on FM, it's their first goal ever. And, yeah... Our keeper, Herbin, should have done better there. First change of the game is being forced upon us. George Brown has got a bit of a knock. What has he got wrong with him? Potential foot injury. So he's having to come off and Jaden Campbell comes on for him on the right-hand side. 62 minutes gone and we've got the ball. Wardrop goes to Jones. He tries to go over the top and Marriott can't get onto it. But he does get it off the second pass again. And right now over top, Mundell's offside. I'm pretty sure Mundell is offside. And he missed it anyway. And no, he wasn't offside. So that would have counted. Disappointing then for Mundell. But now Mbala with the corner. It's an outswinger. Gets headed away. Hopkins with the ball. Goes to Campbell on the edge of the box. Should have taken the shot on there. Eventually he does. But he waited way too long for that. Like waiting for a yodel delivery. Waiting for him to take that shot on people. One more change just being made now. Estrada coming on for Diaz right. we got just over 15 minutes left. We should be seeing this game through you would think. But you never know. So just bring on a fresh pair of legs in the midfield. Oh no they are all over us. Asgard with it and Herbin with the catch. Very nice keeping there. From the main man. Herbin throws it wide to Campbell. He plays it quick and Simmons cannot get onto it. Clark gives it back to Green. And Green in his own box. Again just taking his sweet time. Goes long. Knight heads it on but Estrada wins it back. Goes all the way back to our keeper. Very, very long high like this. Somebody is scoring in a second. Hopefully it's us. Jones goes over the top. And their man heads it away. Goes to Holmes. To Hunter. And it's them who's scoring. No, it's not. They've missed it. An absolutely awful shot there at the end of that highlight. Just under 10 minutes remaining. Jaden Campbell on the right-hand side. With the ball. He comes inside now. Goes to Estrada. Mundell's in space. He's got a man out wide. But Griffiths might get himself sent off there. And is he? Come on, send him off. Send him off. And he is off. Yes. That should be the win for us, you would think. And now, just one more change. Stephen Hopkins is looking particularly knackered there with his 58% of uh, overall condition. So I've taken him off for the man young just for the last few minutes. Shouldn't be in any danger of losing this now, you would think. Four minutes of injury, three minutes even, of injury time remaining. Wardrop with the free kick goes all the way to Mbala on the other side. He goes to Wilson who's in space. Mundell with the shot and there it is. 3-1 to the Kingsland boys. 3-1 to the Kingsland boys. Eight unbeaten now. We are definitely back to where we was last season. But is it a little too late? A very, very nice goal there. We should be in the playoffs. We should be back in the playoff places now, I would think, after this result. 
as indeed there is the full time whistle. 18 shots to their 13, 8 on target to their 5, 3 clear cut chances to their 2 and 56% of the possession all made for a very nice 3-1 win. I'm very, very happy with that. Let's go passionate. I'm very pleased. And yet everybody is delighted. Let's go and have a look at the league table. And then I shall say adieu. Oh, we are so close. We are just one point outside of the playoffs. But we do have two games in hand. So if we win both of those games, we'll be on 36 points. Just 10 points behind Brackley. It's still doable. I still think we can win this league. Let me know down below if you think we can as well. But I think it's still on. I'm going to be an optimist. We're going to win this league. And so guys, that is where we are going to leave it for today. If you've enjoyed that video, please pop a massive thumbs up down below. Every like really does help us out with the YouTube algorithm. So please pop as many likes down below as you can. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Bad Jokes Gaming. Subscribe to the channel for more FM20 content like this. We're going to be doing this series all the way through to FM21. And I've got a new Passion for FM database starting at the weekend. So very much looking forward to getting that out for all you guys. And yeah, speaking of Passion for FM, check out the website, the Discord, the Twitter, the Facebook. All the details are down below. Very awesome website. Got some awesome guides, some awesome downloads, some very awesome stuff of all kinds really. So go and check that website out. And yep guys, that is all for episode number 25. I shall see you in episode 26. Arrivederci.